the right angle. And remember, when you're doing your turn, um, to make it smooth and graceful. All right? Would you like to come down and do a half turn for me, please? The right turn for me. These women are buying $60 worth of professional guidance in deportment, grooming, social and business etiquette, and conversation techniques. They've come to the Pat Woodley Beauty School in answer to this message. Many astute wives have realized that their husband's future success can only be achieved if they groom themselves for new social strata. The school reinforces its ability to turn out better executive wives with a seductive series of before and after photographs. And this beauty school is not just cashing in on the desire of every woman to be more attractive. It's a fact that many Australian companies today insist on checking out the wife of a prospective executive. Brian Chown is managing director of a firm which finds top men to fill highly paid executive jobs and top women to go with them. It's not normal practice to interview the wife, but there are other ways of finding out about her. The client, uh, when he gets to what we call the short list, and he's looking at, say, three finalists, will say, well, I think that the time is right for us to have a look at uh, Mrs. Finalist. And this may be done by virtue of a dinner party where the uh, managing director of the client company and his wife may go out with uh, the finalist and his wife. Mm. And I have known of this uh, resulting in rejection of the applicant because of the fact that the wife didn't measure up. How else do you find out what you want to know about an executive's wife? Presumably there are personal references, are there? Oh yes, each referee will supply us uh, with references. Uh, sometimes one reads between the lines on these references and in the course of our discussions with him we might sort of casually ask what sort of neighbours he has. And uh, we equally casually ask what the neighbour's name happens to be. And uh, then uh, using the most convenient uh, means we have of the telephone, uh, we find that we're talking to the neighbour concerning uh, Mr Applicant and or his wife's uh, attitudes, the way they get on at home and things like this. So there are various ways of making a very uh, frank and honest approach to a person. Once I would say he has reached really senior level, well from $15,000 upwards, then I would say that they want to know what she's like at entertaining, is she able to mix with people, has she made the ladder as well as her husband, and kept up with him in all respects and easy to mix with, then they would really want to know, go in, delve into these facts about her. Miss Robin Bra is office manager for another management consultant who recruits executives for its client companies. And it is at the personal referee level that you would inquire about what the wife is like because this is people who know them, who've mixed with them socially, they can give an indication how she mixes, drinks, smokes and generally conducts herself and therefore you would gauge this information that way. Does the company want to go any further than that ever? For example, uh, moral reputation, this well, sort of thing? Well, obviously this goes without saying, I feel. Uh, also a company, in many cases, they don't want other executives to know that they are recruiting a particular man for the job. They might meet him off limits, and this way the chief executive would also meet the wife off limits. Or on the other hand, his secretary might entertain the wife for luncheon. She can see what she's like, her dress sense at all both day and night level, and this way they can assess what she is like and is she keeping up with the husband. Have you, on behalf of your company, ever been in the position of professionally observing the wife of a prospective employee? Yes, I have. I have been called upon by coincidence. So happened that I knew these people and they were also a client where I was required to attend a dinner party. And I, as a matter of fact, to give you an example, only last week I was at a function where a young executive wife was there, it was a dinner party, long dress was worn of course, and she had a stole on, a fur stole. And how critical the eye is, the matron when she was leaving called her over and said, I don't know whether you realise dear that tails on fur stole have gone out. She took them off and said put these in your handbag and perhaps you'd like to have a fur collar made. She was being critical of the fact that she hadn't kept up with fashion and that they were spoiling her outfit. But do you seriously make the point that a small 
point, a small mm -hmm. point of fashion mm -hmm. perhaps like that, mm -hmm. could influence whether or not a man's going to be chosen for a job. No, but I think that that's one is one point. But then perhaps there could be other points where she hasn't kept up her uh, ability to mix with people, her knowledge of world affairs. If she slipped up on one thing, then perhaps she slipped up on others. From your, your point of view, did you feel uh, in any way a bit like Big Brother in having to make this observation, that you were intruding in no, some way? No, I didn't. I felt it was part of my job. Do you think that wives, on an occasion like you describe, are quite aware that they're under surveillance and the reason for this? I think if they're not, then they're an unwise wife. Does an applicant for a job ever express surprise or, or maybe even distaste at the idea of his wife being appraised as well as himself? No, I don't think so. I think if he's at that level, uh, he should have expected. Uh, I can think of a case of uh, an executive whose rise uh, to fame in his organisation uh, stopped fairly suddenly because of the fact that he had, when he got married at a fairly young age, mm -hmm. married a less somewhat... Um, and I don't want to be snobbish in saying this, but below his station in life. So that as he progressed at the rate that one could expect, his wife didn't. Uh, she was somewhat illiterate, and uh, this became a real restricting factor for this fellow's growth. What does he do about that? Well, what can he do about it? <laughs> he has a couple of choices open to him. Uh, it is possible that his wife, if she is genuinely interested in the progression of her husband in his vocation will do something about improving herself or her English and there are many ways open for her to do this or if it's the question of her uh, her dress or her uh, presentation of herself she can do something about this on the other hand uh, it's quite possible that the executive will decide that he's not going to be frustrated in the attainment of his goals and therefore he does something a little bit more drastic he uh, decides to you know get a new wife my husband's extremely well groomed and fashion conscious and if I lag behind, he's liable to tell me so. So I'd like to get, you know, better grooming and makeup and more confidence generally. So in a way you're doing this to keep up with him. That's yes, in fact, yes. <laughs> I'm hoping for a miracle, I think. <laughs> you're hoping for a miracle. Oh, what does yes. that mean? Well, I need a lot of polishing up and uh, I'd like to be more sure of myself. I am very unsure of myself. Dawn Burton is a graduate of Pat Woodley's executive wife course. She's married to the marketing manager for one of Australia's largest printing firms and says more than half of his work is done socially, especially at home. These days, Mrs Burton has the table set at 10 o'clock in the morning for tonight's dinner party. But there was a time when she didn't manage so well and her husband suggested she should do something to become a better executive wife. Yes, as a matter of fact, he had done something himself about being a better executive and he'd gone to a phrenologist. A phrenologist is a person that puts his hands through your hair, feels your bumps and then sits back and enjoys conversation with you and then helps you adjust your way of thinking. So your husband suggested that you should go? Well he go. suggested maybe I'd like to do this because other executives wives had more or less had an inspection from this person uh, to see whether they were able to cope with uh, advanced positions that their husband may have. Does anybody ever object to this? Any, any of your acquaintances or friends? I have known of a person who did and her husband never ever went any further in that company because they felt that it was better he didn't. She just wasn't able to cope. And I think had she gone, maybe she would have been more in my position where she would accept this and, and realise that it was all for both their advantages. Mm. So you've changed, as it were, into almost the ideal so. executive's wife. I hope so. I think that uh, this is becoming an increasing trend, a trend-setting factor, and I think that it's a good factor coming into our business. We're trying to be smart in all respects. We just don't have a smart secretary, we have a smart wife as well. Your face is a company face. It smiles at executives, then goes back in place. The company furniture, oh, it suits me fine. The company letterhead of uh, Valentine. So you play it the company way. All company policy is by me okay. You'll never rise up to the top. But there's one thing clear. Whoever the company fires, I will still be You here. will still be here. Year after year after fiscal, never take a risk, oh yeah.